Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me again. I just wanted to quickly go over three books that I finished before I go to the library and pick up all those library olds. So I might stick this video on um, before I uh, tack it onto the library pickup. But I just wanted to talk about three books and I'm in a different spot today. Um, I am at the little desk that I, uh, where I read every morning right now for the rest of the year and for this entire year, a chapter of War and Peace a day. So this has been really fun and we, are, we officially last week uh, got to the halfway mark. We're in volume three. So it's been so much fun. If you've ever thought of doing a year long read along of a book like this, I love being immersed in little bite sized pieces in, in Tolstoy's world. All right. So the first one uh, that I, uh, first book I wanted to share is this Anita Bruckner, uh, A Private View. I mentioned this in, uh, that I was reading this in another video and I don't, I don't know if you've read any Anita Bruckner's, but if you have, you're probably familiar with the fact that she usually uses a female protagonist. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but I'm going to say that's probably true. I haven't read, uh, I've probably read now like four or five Bruckner's. This is a male lead character and uh, this is George Bland. He is a um, retired uh, guy, I think maybe he's 60. He was planning on spending his time with his best friend who's a widow and that they've worked together for a long time and they were going to just travel the world. Um, unfortunately, his friend passed away. He's by himself. He's in his apartment building. Um, and he keeps to himself and he meets this young woman who says she has permission to stay at someone's apartment in his building, a family who's away on an extended vacation, a European vacation. And um, she comes to him because she knows he has the spare key. Plot ensues. That's all I'm going to say about this one. I'm watching Suki because she's right here and she is wound up. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about this one. But you know, I don't really require too much of a plot with Anita Bruckner. The plot's there, but this is all about characters and their internal experiences, the things that are going on inside that they're not necessarily sharing with uh, the people around them or um, the characters that uh, Anita Bruckner sticks into the stories. So this really delivers. Um, it's all about the characters with Anita Bruckner. They're very reliable stories in that way. They've got a certain tone where um, there's not going to be a whole lot of suspense um, or a whole lot of drama. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. Duke. Duke. Oh gosh. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I highly recommend this one because it is a little different from the ones at least that I've read. All right, Tuke. All right, here we go. The next one that I, I wanted to share is this Japanese translated fiction called Mild Vertigo by Miko Kanai. I don't know if I have that right, but this was originally published in Japan in 1997 and, um, she got caught on something. <laughs> Um, and it's been translated into English now by, and published by New Directions. This is a mild story. This is a story of Natsumi, who's a quote unquote housewife in the 90s. And she's got two school aged children, pretty young uh, children. And her husband goes off to work every day. And this is her musings about life, about her life in day to day and her interactions with her husband, internal thoughts about her husband. She's sharing some actual conversations that they've had. She shares things that annoy her about him. And, um, and it's also about the way that she feels, um, 
about herself when she's with her friends and people in her neighborhood. Also, um, her reflections about how their families, their parents and older generations, feel about how Natsumi and her husband are and how they live now compared to traditions and what would deem to be proper for a woman in Japan, a married woman, things like that. I thought that all of that was so fascinating. Um, so yeah, this has a mild tone. There's no plot. I don't really um, require a plot uh, always. I, um, I love it when it shows up, but I don't really require one. I just loved the, the tone and the mood of this writing and then how it went from micro to macro. Um, and then at the end is this, this uh, chapter all of a sudden, it's called Mild Vertigo, the chapter, but we've already had a chapter called Mild Vertigo, so I was confused. And then um, the chapter takes you to this woman in Brooklyn who is, you find out, uh, this is a really short chapter, but she's editing a book um, that's being published by New Directions called Mild Vertigo. <laughs> it's very meta, but uh, so that was, I finally figured out, it was tacked on. Um, so that was interesting, just a little quirky thing at the end. Um, so if you're in the mood for this kind of writing, I think this really delivers. And I just love what New Directions uh, puts out. I'm always interested in what they're doing. Sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm always willing to check it out. All right. Lastly, Francisco by Allison Mills Newman. This is auto fiction. I can't remember whether she calls her main character, the young black female character, another name. I think she does in the story, but anyway. Um, this was first published in the 70s and now it's been republished and this is a short little like journal loose journal of her thoughts um, and recording what she's doing where she's going and then she's recording actual conversations she's having with people the back and forth she's a uh, an actress who's trying to make her way she's been in new york city she's come out to hollywood and she's disillusioned by the whole thing New York and, and Hollywood. She's met a couple, a group of people. One of those people is Francisco, an independent filmmaker. And they just go traveling and um, around different parts of California um, when Francisco is filming and he's editing. So he's visiting different friends' studios to do that. And um, I really loved this voice, the uh, capturing the feeling of the 70s in California. Um, and it's also capturing her concerns and feelings about what's going on around her. So um, they're talking about the assassinations that have happened in this time period and um, more specifically Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. There's, there's talk of her um, Either this was something that I read or it's actually in the book, I don't remember, but um, that her and her friends are a part of this black arts movement. And that was interesting for me to go and um, <laughs> to go and read about separately. Um, so wonderful mood and, and um, an encapsulation of her experience in the 70s. There's a wonderful author's note at the end, which catches you up to present day. So Alison Mills Newman is writing this note, and I think it was written in, um, it's called an afterword. Yeah, May 2022. So it, uh, it, it, it's just fantastic to hear from the author in present day. So I highly recommend this. Um, this is certainly a book you could read while on vacation at the beach, in an airport, on an airplane. It's, it's that kind of um, mood story, but very powerful. There were a few paragraphs um, in, this, in this book that I will remember. They are memorable, um, her writing down conversations that she had with, um, with different people and um, just really powerful there. So that's all I have. Um, I'm going to go to the library this weekend. Today, this is um, 
lunchtime and I am headed down to the city which is only about 20 minutes away and I'm gonna meet my um, son for lunch we're gonna to go to a taco place that we love which is just right across from his building and that's what's in store now and I will talk to you later thanks for joining in oh and of course if you've read these books or you have them on your docket please let me know I would love to hear your thoughts on them too bye hi everyone I'm gonna put this thing on I am at the library I'm parked right uh, right in front because I actually came after work on the same day because while I was at lunch I remembered that Taylor Swift is coming to town and the traffic in the city it's already building so I'm gonna go through this massive library hall really quickly just to show you what I got and then I'll circle back around and talk a little bit more about these books later this weekend since it's only Friday anyway I got page boy in I'm really uh, this is a memoir and I'm really looking forward to tr checking this out um, I've read a lot about this book uh, and again I'm not going to talk about these books I just want to show you what I got and then I'll, I'll see which ones I end up digging into and um, and just reflect on those this is Claire Fuller's new book the memory of animals oh I heard about this on M the mooks and the gripes podcast islands of abandonment nature rebounding in the post human landscape this is about areas that um, are repopulating with nature like the DMZ zone and Chernobyl it doesn't have any colored photos in it though I was hoping for that and then divorcing by Susan Taubes I think this was just reprinted it's a she's a Hungarian American writer um, I, I don't know anything about it other than I read about it somewhere Kairos I saw this in the New Yorker Kairos by Jenny Erpen Beck. so I'm not going to try to figure out what that is this one I'm really confused about the nursery by Sylvia Sylvia Molnar and it says a fierce psychological novel I know I saw this in the New Yorker or the New York Times and two more I think in memoriam I didn't realize um, this was such a thick novel but oh it's only 379 pages it looks thicker than that just because of the way the pages are um, in memoriam Alice Wynn about two men um, two gay men that go off to war and then the best minds a story of friendship madness and the tragedy of good intentions by Jonathan Rosen I have no idea I don't know so anyway that's that I'm gonna get back on the road because traffic is building uh, because it's Friday and because all the um, Swifties are coming into town is that what they're called Taylor Swift fans looks like a fantastic concert I've seen snippets of it in Matthew Scarpetta's booktube channel that uh, I'll link his channel in the notes so that you can check out his vlog on uh, seeing a Taylor Swift concert in Boston anyway I will talk to you again probably in this same video as soon as I have taken a look at some of these books hi there I'm actually back at the library this weekend the weekend I said I wasn't coming back to the library but um, I picked up you know that bunch of books and I decided I was going to uh, return a bunch of them because it just wasn't the right time for me whether it was just that big nonfiction book that I held up or a couple fiction that um, I just wasn't connecting with wasn't in the mood to read at this point but um, I did finish page boy and um, I gotta say that memoir was uh, it was just done so well um, that's a, a book by Elliot Page and it's his journey about uh, or his journey through his childhood and some of his adulthood up until I think he's in his mid-30s um, 
about being born a girl, Ellen Page, and then uh, realizing at a pretty young age that he was really uh, meant to be a boy. He was, uh, everything about his being for him was a boy. And um, he has uh, or had very religious parents and that was um, painful and, uh, and a very interesting story um, to hear about. And also he was growing up in the 90s so kids would um, make fun of him and even just, just bully him as he got older um, for being so boyish. Uh, and then he, he started acting and that became its own issue because he was at that point a young female actress and Hollywood needed him to be that way. So just the way that he put this um, story of his life so far together, he intersperses earlier chapters of his life with, with uh, later chapters. And uh, some of the things that uh, happen with, between he and his mother and the way that he expresses them and the way that he shares his thoughts about that, his internal um, experience is, I just thought that was so well done. So I highly recommend, I've already returned it so I don't have it to hold up, but the, the book that I am keeping is Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck and this is the um, is it Hungarian most oh German um, you know it's a seems like an, a simple story a young woman in the 1980s meets by just really by chance a married writer in his 50s named Hans and I don't know why I mean I'm finding that a little disturbing but it's in the 80s um, she's 19 um, what I'm finding really interesting is the writing and how they're having an affair. I'm really early into the book, but the reason that I keep reading it is because of the way that Jenny Erpenbeck writes. This is gritty and um, not a trite novel, it, at least not in the first... 55 pages so we'll see what I have to say later about that but the big deal I wanted to talk about before I go is um, did I finish any other books no um, is I walked to I walked to the library and there was a bunch of people standing outside waiting for it to open because it's their annual book sale I had no idea I didn't know what kind of book sale this was um, but when I got inside all genres, paperbacks, hardbacks, oops, sorry about that, for sale. And it was a dollar, it was a dollar for paperbacks and softbacks, and two dollars for hardbacks. Pay as you can. So it was a dollar suggested price for softbacks and hardbacks, uh, um, softbacks and paperbacks. But there were people in there with kids and you could get 20 I mean if you wanted to you could get 20 children's books and if you had five dollars that's what you could pay and I just love that so much um, for a city library it's so cool um, more people reading getting books into people's hands uh, I love it um, so I just said to myself look if they have this is gonna be so obscure but if they have a Catherine Mansfield, I think it's collected stories that I have written down on my whiteboard that I would someday get um, because they don't have it at the library um, to for a loan. But Mansfield, if I saw a Mansfield, I mean, if I saw a Trollope and it was in the series, fine, I will grab, I will grab that. You guys are not going to believe this. You're not going to believe it. How astounded do you think I was when I saw the collected stories of Catherine Mansfield? And I bet you that I don't know, but I bet you this is the book that I have written down. I have heard so much about Catherine Mansfield. I'm going to, I'm just going to dip right into this. I'm not a short story writer, but um, I'm definitely going to dip, dip into this. So uh, yeah, a dollar, if you can believe it. Um, 
And then the other thing I found that I just couldn't resist because, I mean, this looks like it hasn't even been opened. Look at this edition of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, this little penguin. And um, I was leaving and a librarian that I see all the time said, oh, what did you find? And I showed her this and said, one of the things I really wanted to get to this year was to read a Faulkner and read a Steinbeck. I've never read either of them. And she said, oh, this is a really good one. And look how tiny it is. It's um, less than, yeah, it's 100 pages. So, oh, I'm so happy. Um, and then the only other thing that I will talk about here is this book that I picked up as a hold, which is, uh, is it pronounced Herba Buena by Nina LaCour, A Love Story for Our Time. Um, I've seen this. I have um, keep seeing it in the also in the library. When Sarah Foster runs away from home at 16, she leaves behind the girl she once was, capable of trust and in intimacy. Years later in Los Angeles, she is a sought-after bartender renowned as much for her brilliant cocktails as for the mystery that clings to her. And then there's another time, uh, there's another um, character, Emily Dubois, Dubois is um, another person in this story, and then it goes into Emily's story. So I think this might be a love story between Sarah and Emily, but I don't know. I am um, eager to dip in. I do want to say before I go, Islands of Abandonment, that book that I was so eager to get to, that looks so interesting, but because it doesn't have the colored pictures or even just pictures that I was hoping, I, I uh, downloaded a sample of the audiobook because I figured, well, if it doesn't have pictures, um, I wonder if it would be interesting to listen to it, especially when I'm outside um, doing a, a bunch of yard work and gardening. I like to listen to, uh, to something. And I did listen to a sample um, and it sounds pretty good. So I've got some credits to use. So that's all I have for now. And I will catch you up on my reading after, uh, after I've dug into a few things, but thanks for joining me. And um, of course, please let me know if you've ever read anything by Catherine Mansfield or any of the books that, uh, that I am um, into right now. Please let me know what your um, what your summer reading is. I'm watching somebody try to parallel park behind me. <laughs> uh, please let me know how your summer reading is going. We are almost at the end of June, uh, so I want to hear about it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you later. Hi again. I'm going to wrap up this vlog now that started on Friday, and now it's Monday evening. I originally filmed this outside earlier this evening, but um, I don't know. I'm having trouble with the download of that little video segment, so I'm doing it again. This is what happens sometimes um, in trying to record something. So I am here to give you an update on my reading of Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. This is a German novel and it's it's newly written set in the um, late 80s and as I had mentioned in another video this is about a an affair between a 19 year old and and a guy in his 50s which is creepy um, but set in its time, I'm just going to leave it at that, I guess. Um, and what's really keeping me in it, because, you know, once I started reading about that story, I thought, oh, you know, how many stories have we all read? But it's actually the writing that's keeping me in this book. Quality of the writing, the way that she's telling this age-old story, it's um, the two people involved um, and really it's the it's the young woman who's um, who's really interesting and nuanced and the guy is too in a way um, this is a relationship that's really shaking him up a bit but we've also kind of heard that story too so it boils down to the writing I'm um, almost halfway through there is also a little bit of a monkey wrench that happens. That's the part that I just recently hit that I'm not going to talk about because it really 
is the unfolding of the story that um, that uh, is is really um, it's really part of the book. <laughs> it's really the joy of reading this book is or reading any book is to let it unfold without <laughs> without it being spoiled. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So more on this after I've finished. So I will circle back and um, give you more on this. And um, oh, and by the way, so I just want to give you an idea of where you are because I don't normally ever film here. But um, this is the family room where my bookcases are and the, that fireplace. And this is a cockeyed angle of this little, it's not a dining room. It's like an eat-in kitchen area. Um, we don't really ever eat at the table because let me just turn you a little bit there are there's like a little breakfast bar thing on the island which we love um, that came with those this house came with those like mid-century looking cool chairs so and then this is a um, French doors into my workout room um, so called because it's got my Peloton bike in there and a weight bench and weights and uh, like a half of a mirror, which is like an old dresser mirror that I use to kind of see what I'm doing. Um, anyway, so the next book that I just happened to pick up that I've had since Christmas time is you won't be able to see it because of the glare but it's called Bluets by Maggie Nelson. So I got this book through a bookstagram uh, secret Santa that James the Bookend uh, organizes, I guess. Um, it's fantastic. I just happened to see it. I'm connected with him on bookstagram and he happened to be my secret Santa. Um, so nice. And one of the books he sent was this one. And wouldn't you know, I just heard a book too, we're talking about Maggie Nelson and another book. And he happened to mention that Bluets was one of his favorite books. And that's um, Jonathan, no, Benjamin Journal. I'll link his booktube channel below, but um, yeah. So Maggie Nelson is a poet, an essayist. So you know how poets write novels, um, sparse, every word, every sentence, every paragraph, well chosen, well thought about. Um, <laughs> that's what I found. Um, I'm thinking of um, the one that just comes to mind is Eva Baltazar with Permafrost and Boulder. Boulder was the one I obviously read just recently and it still sticks with me. Just the conciseness of her word choice and how she crafts sentences. Um, so this is, so is it a fiction, piece of fiction? Is it an essay? Is it auto fiction? Is it a memoir? You know, I looked this up and I couldn't really find the answer. So I'm gonna say it's like fiction, but it is a uh, female protagonist and, um, but she doesn't say a lot about herself. You are just dropped into a situation that you don't even know what that situation is until she just puts little pebbles down and you start to connect connect the dots, which are the pebbles that I just mentioned. Um, so that's what I, I really liked. It wasn't like tricky or anything like that. It was just really wonderful writing in little snippets. And so she numbers her little snippets, but it all moves forward. Um, Bluets, by the way, she eventually says that it's Les Bluets is, um, is a word that means cornflower. So yeah, so she begins like, you won't be able to see it, but first paragraph, is numbered one and she just like drops in suppose i were to begin by saying that i had fallen in love with a color number two and so i fell in love with a color in this case the color blue as if falling under a spell a spell i fought to stay under and get out from under in turns and so she this is a um a set of musings and then she drops in some facts like the fact that this relationship broke up and 
the fact that she mentions, unfortunately, that one of her good friends has been in a horrible accident and um, with a spinal, has suffered a spinal injury. And I don't know whether her friend becomes a paraplegic or a quadriplegic, but at some point she's caring for her friend. And so it's about grief and loss and loneliness and all through the lens of the color blue. And it's also about life and hope. All in this little book, novella. I guess you could call it a novella. Um, so it's a collection of muses and there's some talk of her relationship and those parts, some of them are a little explicit. I marked a page here. She says, number 71, I've been trying for some time to find dignity in my loneliness. I've been finding this hard to do. Number 72, it is easier, of course, to find dignity in one's solitude. Loneliness is solitude with a problem. And then she goes on from there. Wow. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, paragraph on page 39, number 104, about her friend and her friend's pain um, and how she carries that. And um, it's amazing. that particular page and paragraph is amazing. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, a real bang for your buck. It, it really was. And I um, am eager to seek out other Maggie Nelson, but it's one of those things where it's so rich that I won't be seeking out another Maggie Nelson soon, um, but I will in the future when I need another something. So, um, yeah, this was wonderful. And thank you, James, the bookend for such a wonderful selection. Um, okay. So that'll do it. I talked, um, in this, I'll call it, I'll call it a vlog. Um, even though I don't have B roll or probably won't have music. Um, I talked about reading Francisco and Mild Vertigo. I don't know whether I'll continue reading Yerba Buena. I don't know. I dipped in. Anyway, we talked about some books. I finished some books. One of the things I want to mention before I go, I noticed that this book and Mild Vertigo are both published by New Directions. New Directions books. And it's funny because New Directions, as I'm learning now, doesn't publish books in the same format, in the same size. This is a hardback. A lot of their books are softback. And then they've got that whole storybook series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go on their website and see what I mean. Um, and I realized as I was dipping into what I've read so far this year, uh, that I've read a lot of New Directions books. I actually went to their website because I was just curious and I realized a lot of, not a lot, but some of the books I've read this year are New Directions and I didn't know that. I'll be talking about that later because what I wanted to end by saying is that I think I'm going to do like a end of, not an end of, um, <laughs> halfway through the year type reading catch up. I think there's a lot of people that use, uh, booktubers that use the mid-year freakout tag. When I started seeing these tags, um, I don't know what's meant by freakout. So I just thought, I don't, I'm not interested in that. I don't, I don't like that phrase or that name, but I guess I don't know what it means. It's just a, it's a mid-year check-in and somebody created a bunch of questions that help you look at your reading and um and reflect on it you have a uh, presumably half of the year left to go and so um i have been looking at my year so far and that's been fun and i saw all those new direction books so i thought that um, i would do a mid-year check-in and i will answer some of the maybe a mini freak out tag thing and um, i'll answer some of those questions and use it use it as a framework and then talk about the new direction books that I've read 
in the last six months, but then also uh, I've identified a few that I'm interested in going forward. So that will probably be coming up next, but meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and let me know about any books here that I've mentioned that you have something to say about. I'd love to hear about it. Um, do you know Maggie Nelson? Maggie Nelson's writing. I would love to know that too. And based on when this is going out, let me know how your reading has gone so far this year. Although you'll be able to do that too on that other, on that other video. But thanks for joining me. I so appreciate everybody who takes the time to subscribe. It really means something um, when you know that someone's taken the time to hit the sub subscribe button. I know I do try to subscribe to booktubers that I'm watching. Um, in that mid-year check-in, I'm going to do some shout outs of some people that, um, that I watch who I'm subscribed to and um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.